come to this Mass, and whenever I let Father Schumacher know that, he said, well, why don't you just take it? I was coming because today is the feast day of St. Dominic, and the lay Dominican group in the diocese is gathering for this Mass before our monthly meeting. And so as I began to think about what I could say, I thought about a new band that I like. Well, not a new band, but a new band for me. It's called the Traveling Wilburys. You may have heard of them. It's a bunch of uh, wonderful musical artists who uh, decided to get together and form a band together. Uh, some of them are Tom Petty, Bob Dylan, George Harrison. Just real uh, rock stars, both in that they actually play music and rock stars in the sense that they're very good at what they do. And so one of my favorite songs of this group is called Heading for the Light. I thought that that was an appropriate thing to uh, use as a jumping point for this homily on St. Dominic. Uh, There are two stories about St. Dominic uh, that I thought of whenever I uh, thought of St. Dominic in this song. And the first one is that before he was even born, his godmother saw a vision of young child Dominic with a star on his forehead, a light. She saw this as uh, foretelling the holiness of this child that was to come. The second story about St. Dominic uh, that ties in is that his mother had a vision of a dog running around with a candle in its mouth, lighting the world on fire. Right? And this symbolized uh, Dominic's order that he, was, he would begin spreading the light of the gospel, right? setting the world on fire with the word of God. And even the word Dominican, named after Dominic, uh, shows this, that two Latin words, domini and canes, means the hounds or the dogs of the Lord. The Dominicans are those dogs of the Lord spreading the gospel uh, across the earth. And so this theme of light is very present in the life of St. Dominic and in the life of the order that he founded, the order of preachers. And so I started thinking, what does light do? Well, light enlightens, obviously. But light doesn't discriminate. Light shines on both the good and the bad. And so I thought of two hopefully good examples to try to show this. I'd imagine that you are in an art museum, say the Louvre. There is so much in the Louvre that you could spend probably your life in there and not see it all. Right, there's amazing works of art, uh, amazing things that are priceless and beautiful and inspire and are just wonderful. But if you're in the Louvre at night and all the lights are off, you can't appreciate it. Right? You can't see the beauty that is literally all around you. It's useless. Right? It does nothing for us. But if someone comes and turns the light on, then you can see Right? The good is brought out that is all around you, and so you can enjoy this beauty of the art. It also makes you safer. Right? If you start walking around with the lights off, you're going to trip over something and likely damage something you can't afford to damage. Right? And so light helps us in this sense. Light shines on the good, and it's helpful when it does, and it brings out the good. We're thankful for it. But imagine now, on the other side of things, that you uh, go to a movie. And imagine you're like me, and you love to go to bed early, so you go to a matinee. It's on a hot summer day, inside, it's nice and cool, it's obviously dark because you're watching a movie. But what happens when you go outside? If you're again like me, and you don't bring sunglasses, your eyes hurt. Right? The light is blinding. The light is difficult to take. It seems harmful because you've been in the dark for so long that you don't like the light. Right? Our eyes aren't accustomed to it. And so this is what happens when light shines on bad things. Right? When light shines in dark places and in the dark places of our own lives, it's very uncomfortable. We want to hide from it. 
right? We want to shield our eyes, but that does no good, right? We need to address the darkness. We need to allow the light in to those dark places in our lives, and that light is Christ. I know we hear in Scripture that the light shines in the darkness and the light will not be overcome. And so we have to allow God, we have to allow Christ into those dark places. And so I think that this is a helpful reminder for us that when we, like St. Dominic, right, run around with the torch of the gospel, bringing that light to the world, that we're going to encounter difficulties. Right? He was... He founded his order to go around and tell people that they were believing the wrong thing, right? That they were in error. I don't think they applauded him and welcomed him, right? They struggled. They challenged him. And so when we challenge people on their beliefs, on their sinfulness even, they're not going to like it, right? They're going to be like those people coming out of the movie theater and seeing a bright light, and it's going to hurt them. Right? But we have to continue to proclaim the truth. Right? They might fight us, uh, but we preach the truth anyway. And I think that this line from the Office of Readings today um, can both be scary but encouraging. And this is what someone wrote about St. Dominic. He desired to be scourged and cut to pieces, and so die for the faith of Christ. That's amazing. That's a level of holiness that I'm not at yet. But we need to strive to get there. And we may not be scourged. We may not be cut to pieces necessarily. But we are going to face hardships uh, on account of our faith if we live it well. And so we are still called to be shining examples. Light shining in the darkness. We are still called to set that light not under a basket, not to live our faith privately, but to allow that light to shine, right? to put it on a hill so that it enlightens all. And so we thank God today for that great example of St. Dominic, a true light to the world, not because of his own abilities, not because of his own message, right? He wasn't running around saying Dominic's the best but because he shared the message of Jesus, right? Because he shared the good news of the gospel. And we're called to do the same. And so let us pray that we can follow that shining example of St. Dominic. Let us pray that we can strive personally and encourage others to keep heading for the light. St. Dominic, pray for us.